Beautiful day here in San Marcos, Texas. It's about 65 degrees and warming up. Definitely shorts weather. It's definitely spring. And look who's back. Back in, I think it was November, I made a video introducing the Garmin G5s that we got put in the panel. Obviously, that allowed us to eliminate the attitude indicator and the directional gyro off the panel. That means the vacuum pump got to come out. This is spun by the engine, which generates a suction, and it runs stuff like the attitude indicator and the directional gyro. So replacing the attitude indicator and the directional gyro with the Garmin G5s, I guess we could call that phase one of the large avionics upgrades that are to come in this airplane. Over the last two months while the airplane was getting its annual inspection, we executed what we could call phase two of the big avionics upgrades. We got installed an Electronics International MVP50 engine monitor. Now this thing's pretty big. It's a little over half the size of an iPad mini, but that's okay because pretty much the entire right-hand side of our instrument panel was blank. So just to kind of illustrate the picture of how much stuff came out of the airplane when we got the engine monitor put in. Here's, so for example, like here's the tachometer telling you revolutions per minute of the engine. That guy came out, little mechanical instrument. That's maybe like you know, a third of a pound. Then you've got the old fuel gauges, the old twin needles, and then the old oil gauges, oil pressure, oil temperature. And now that we have that engine analyzer in there, it's just crazy to look at how rudimentary this thing is. And it's just crazy to think about the fact that this is what we used to rely on in the airplane. My dad and I have done quite a bit of flying with the engine monitor now, and it's like, how did we go without having an engine analyzer? Then we've got the Hobbs meter, which was on the right-hand side of our panel. So this clock starts ticking as soon as the oil pressure gets above a certain threshold. So it just had the two electrical contacts there that were connected to an oil pressure switch. The ammeter measures electrical charge or discharge going to the battery. And then of course the ammeter discharge light that was mounted to the panel warns you when the alternator quits working. That has been removed. This little Walkman wind up clock. This was on the left hand side of our panel right by the airspeed indicator. You wind it up, it runs for about eight days. It's a clock with a sweeping second hand which is required for IFR flight. That has been removed. The engine monitor has a digital representation of seconds on Zulu time and flight time clocks. And last but not least, these guys were removed. These were the fuel senders that were sitting in the fuel tank. So if you can imagine this plate mounts onto the end of the fuel tank going down into the fuel tank and as the fuel rises and lowers it tells you how much fuel is in the tank based on uh, resistance i believe is how these work but we got new digital fuel senders put in because we took our fuel gauges out and now the fuel gauges are actually on the engine analyzer and they run off digital fuel senders that are inside the tanks. And I have found those new fuel gauges to almost be scary accurate. I mean, they are crazy accurate. And of course, because the engine monitor is all the way on the right side of our panel, there are rules about what has to be within the pilot's direct line of sight and what doesn't have to be. The engine instruments, or at least a representation of the condition of the engine instruments, has to be within direct view of the pilot right in front of them. So now we have two little lights on the very top of the panel labeled MVP. We've got a red light and a yellow light. Basically, if anything on the engine monitor goes into the yellow, Yellow, we get a blinking yellow light. Anything goes into the red, we get a blinking red light. I understand that some people prefer the old steam gauges, the old mechanical gauges. Some people prefer the glass. Some people absolutely hate mechanical gauges. Some people absolutely hate glass. Some people are okay with both, like me. For me, it just really depends on what I'm doing. If I'm flying in the soup, I really prefer glass. For my dad and I, we do both. We fly locally for fun. We fly long distance for a purpose. So ultimately, we decided that to dress up the panel on this airplane and put all this new equipment in was totally worth it for us. San Marcos Tower Information Hotel, 1058 through the weather, wind calm, visibility 10, sky scattered 4500, temperature 22, 2.13, altimeter 2972, visual approach in use, landing in the party, runway 13. Those airmen, taxi we delta is closed, all aircraft advised on initial contact, you have hotel. You can of course see kind of how it's laid out, but you got the manifold pressure in the RPM oil, pressure oil temp, left fuel gauge, right fuel gauge, fuel flow, carburetor temp. We do have a carb temp probe, so when you pull carb heat, you can actually see the carb, uh, carb temp come up. 
Then we've got estimated fuel remaining based on the totalizer, based on fuel flow, time to empty. So that's based on our, uh, our current fuel flow, how much time we got left on the fuel tanks. And then basically the Hobbs meter, the engine hours. And then we've got, we can set the EGTs and CHT graphs however we want. Percent horsepower, outside air temp, Fahrenheit and Celsius, Zulu time and flight time. The flight time comes alive when the RPM surpasses 2200 and then it doesn't stop until it goes below, I believe it's 1200. All right, parking brake is set. The run-ups, brakes are set. Fuel selector is on both. Trim is set for takeoff. Flight controls free and correct. That one goes up, that one goes down, that one goes up, and that one goes down. Elevators up and down, rudder left and right. Instruments cross-check and calibrate. Our, zero, our airspeed is zero on both airspeed indicators. Altimeter agrees, and they're both set to nine or seven two. Neutral, neutral on the VSI and the turn coordinator. Heading bug set. I'm going to close the window so I can hear the engine better. I rev the throttle up to 1700 RPM. With glass instruments, when you get an exact number, it's easier to fixate on the actual number and you're like, people like sit here trying to get it exactly 1700. If it jumps up to 1710, 1720, no big deal. Well, here's where it's a little bit different with having an engine monitor here. I'm going to check the mag, so first I'm going to go to the right mag. We get a drop in RPM, left mag out, and we see a rise in all four EGTs. And we go back to both. RPM recovers, EGTs start coming down and the enunciator goes away. Now we're going to check the left mag. Drop in RPM, right mag out, a rise in all four EGTs. Back to both. 1700. EGTs equalize, start coming down, and the enunciation is gone. Carb heat, our mags are done, carb heat. So we're looking at the carb temp right here, and are also looking at the RPM, so we're going to pull carb heat. Carb temp comes up, RPM comes down, put it back in, carb heat comes down, the RPM is restored. We do not have a vacuum gauge, there's no vacuum pump. Amps, volts, 13 and a half volts, and we're charging about one and a half amps. Oil pressure is in the green, oil samples in the green. Throttle idle check closed. We're going to come all the way back to a hard idle. Way out. 870 RPM. And we're going to bring the throttle back up to 1000 and set the friction lock. The run up checklist is complete. We'll go ahead and do the pre takeoff checklist. Flaps set 0 to 10. They both come down, they both come all the way up. We want them all the way up. Mixture set best power. Carb heat is all the way in. We got the mixture full rich. Transponder squawking altitude VFR. And the heading bug is set runway heading. Doors and windows closed and latched. We'll get this window before takeoff. Landing light on. We're going to get the strobe lights on. We're clear for takeoff. The time note 1815 Zulu is the time noted, and we're taking off runway 13. If we're not off by 26, we're going to abort the takeoff. San Marcos Tower, Skyhawk, 809991, holding short of 13, Juliet, ready for VFR departure. 809991, San Marcos Tower, hold short runway 13 for landing and departing traffic. Hold short runway 1380991. That's Tabria. 0991, San Marcos Tower, runway 13, clear for takeoff, 11706. Runway 13, clear for takeoff, 80991. You want us to make a left turn northbound? Left turn northbound is approved. 991. Alright, strobe lights coming on. So we set power with RPM in this airplane. However, uh, we do have a manifold pressure indication. And it's cool to have it, I guess. It came with the unit, so. Our final did look clear. And we got to see us on the upwind. We're just going to do a reality check on our heading compass. I see a 13, I see a 13 on the compass, I see a 13 on the gyro. Heels down to the floor. He is the power to the takeoff setting, which is full. clear for the option, then you can resume left close traffic. Takeoff power set. Engines in the green. Airspeed's alive. There's 60 knots. We're airborne. Pick up a little bit of speed and pitch for VY. 78 knots. Crossing runway 26, there's our abort point. Engine looks good. Eyes outside. Eyes outside. San Marcos Tower, Skyhook 199. Airplane right up there. Wind Cold Tail. After in Austin, Delta 2894 is 11 3 to Saint, descending via the lakes with Echo. Delta 2894, Austin, approach, expect runway 17 right. 17 right, Delta 2894. There's Mansfield Dam down there. Sorry, 26143, Roger. I still have you on radar from Gray Approach and um, just verify or what is your on course heading for east? For the 
Spicely. Austin approach, Skyhawk, 80991 request. Skyhawk 90901, go ahead. 80991, heading towards downtown from Lake Travis at 4000. Wanted to see if we can do a couple orbits around downtown at 2500 if you got room for us. November 9091, I think that'll work. You can proceed with request, so just remain west of I 35 at all times, please. We'll stay west of the interstate, we'll proceed as requested. 991, thanks. The legendary 360 bridge down there. That's Austin famous, and that little cliff face just to the right of the, the bridge there, Mount Bunnell. Countless people take selfies on that, put it on Instagram with some inspiring quote that they don't live by. Good old I-35. There are way too many humans on this earth. That's why I choose to see the city from above in an airplane, yeah, Austin, instead of uh, driving through it. Oh, the red roofs down there, orange roofs, whatever it is. University of Texas. Giga Maggies. It is a pretty city, no doubt. There's just too many people here. There's state capitol. About lined up with Congress Avenue there. Austin approach Skyhawk 80991. We're done orbiting the city. We're going to head back to San Marcos at 2500. Roger, thank you, and uh, I'm around on our one of us when you have information. I'm still showing Indy. I'm not sure if that's what you had before, so Marcus. We had a hotel before. We'll uh, let you know when we got the weather, 80991. Thank you. Marcus Airport information, India, 4845 Zulu weather, wind 1506, it's building 10, sky scatter, 4500. 5408, Austin approach, expect runway, one Expect runway, 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 we're looking, one three, a little over nine gallons of side, we're showing 18.3 remaining on the totalizer, so that's like the totalizer and the gauges are dead on with each other. Oil pressure looks good, oil temp looks good, fuel flow looks great, carb temp looks great, CHTs, EGTs, well, where they should be. Between 8,000 and 8,500, and it's up to 11,100. Increased power a little bit. And uh, we got new Fox in the airport site. Skyhawk 5408, thank you. Contact approach 125.32, good day. Skyhawk 991, contact San Marcos Tower 126.82, good day. Go on to Tower 80991, thanks for your help. Alright, switch so into Tower. Over the city of Kyle now. San Marcos Tower, Skyhawk 80991, 2500, information India, about 10 to your north and back for a full stop. Skyhawk 0991, San Marcos Tower, make straight number 17, wind environment 5, that's number 2968. Report a 5 mile final. 2968, report a 5 mile final, runway 17 will make a straight in, 80991. Alright, we'll report. Uh, report 5 miles out. Skyhawk 3500, with you, it's uh, 3400. Similar to the Skyhawk 3500, report uh, Alright, let's do the descent checklist. Descent, descent mixture and rich, and we're going to go full rich. Fuel selector is on both. Car heat is required, we don't need it quite yet. We got the ADIS information in the altimeter set 2968. Instruments cross check and calibrated. Descent checklist complete. Runway 13 for H out of Fox Sharp. 80991, about a 4.5 mile straight in 17. clear to land. 17 clear to land, 991. Alright, pre landing checklist. Brakes pedal test, we got good brake pressure. Landing light is on, autopilot is on. Seat belt, shoulder harnesses. Get strapped in. Mixture is set for best power, we are full rich. The carb heat is coming on. And we see the carb temp come up and a little bit of drop in RPM. Fuel selectors on both and flaps as required. Waiting on the white arc. We have this S, it's S cool, shock cool figure. Charlie Fox, traffic short final. What Ram recommended is you don't want to exceed about minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit per minute on the cylinder head temps. You don't want to cool them down too fast. You could cause a crack. There's an age old debate about whether shock cooling is a myth or not. There's the wide arc. First notch flaps coming in, one 1,000. 
Two one thousand, three one thousand. Give way to the traffic car across from the two six at Charlie. Left the Bravo Bravo contact ground. Give way to the traffic here on Charlie. We are clear to land runway one seven. Ground. Two dose here. Thanks. I'm getting my yellow light blinking because the uh, the left fuel tank is dipping down below four point seven gallons because of our pitch attitude right now. Right, about seventy knots on final. Gonna get a little bit closer to the runway and I'll drop my second notch of flaps. Wind is variable at five. Currently, I have a very light left crosswind. I got the airplane on the rollout, runway one three. Let's get 20 degrees, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. There's 20 degrees flaps. Similarly, Charlie Fox, uh, right at Echo, ground 2012. Right at Echo and uh, the runway 2012. made and the power comes to idle. Use the rudder to keep the nose straight down the runway. And here's the round out, arrest the descent, and just hold her off. Let the airplane bleed off energy. There was a little balloon, we came back up. Just hold her off, hold her off. There are the mains. And there's the traffic. Right 26, hold short of 13809901. So there we are, 80991 is back, finished with what we're calling phase two of our big avionics upgrades. Autopilot, hopefully coming soon. We, we're just kind of prioritizing our upgrades right now. There's a bunch of stuff we want to do to this airplane. I want to start flying IFR a lot more and get some actual IMC because I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit rusty on my instrument stuff. I know the procedures, I've been training my dad a good bit here and there, but actually flying in the system IFR and IMC on flight plans. Yeah, I want to do that some more, so videos will be coming soon about that. You know the drill. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to head over to aviation101.com slash store and check out my e-store. You can get some nice t-shirts, some good hats there. I've got mugs, hoodies. What else? What else? What else? Oh, the custom notepad that I was using on my kneeboard today, writing down the instructions. That's for sale at aviation101.com slash store. And shout out to Lightspeed Aviation, the manufacturer of the lovely headsets that I wear in this airplane all the time. I've even got several Lightspeed headsets down there in one of those bins as spares. There's links to their store down in the description, and you can find links to the Lightspeed Sierra and the Zulu 3 down in the description as well. Go check them out. As always, I appreciate y'all watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and of course, stay proficient, and we'll see you in the next one. We'll catch you later.